What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to be putting the turbo oil return flange on the oil pan for the 2JZ. So I bought this kit, it was off of Amazon, so the quality is okay. Uh, the end fittings you can tell are just a little bit cheaper. And I'll go more in depth on what all came in the kit when we do the entire turbo install, which will be on the car. But since we have the engine out, as from last episode, which if you haven't looked, checked that out, make sure to go do so. We're gonna go ahead and pull the entire pan off, which kind of sucks, because I already RTV'd it. It's going to be a lot easier for us to access everything we need to get to and make sure that we don't have shavings in the pan with the pan off. I'm going to go ahead and get the pan off and then I'll go in depth about what all we're going to do today. Well, I'm an idiot. Let me preface that. I have good news in the fact that I realized I didn't have to take off the entire oil pan to be able to do this. I've got to retorque the bolts that I already took out, but that's okay, because now I don't have to re-RTV the entire top section. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, I don't have to take off the entire oil pan here, because um, this right here is where our flange is going to go. It's OEM. It's meant for it. Um, they're just not drilled out because it came off of a non-turbo SC300, I believe. But I took the bottom part of the pan off, which took way longer than expected. I can definitely access behind this right here. And I'm just going to stick my shot back up there and an air compressor and make sure we get all our shavings. And that's going to save us a ton of time. I'm really happy I found that out before I pulled the whole thing. It's a little more difficult to do on the engine rather than pulling the whole thing off. But it's going to save me a tremendous amount of time. So... And since the engine's out of the car, I have access to everything. So we're going to do that instead of pulling that whole thing off because that would suck. But anyway, the next thing to do is to go ahead and tap our holes, drill our holes, do everything that we need to do for our flange. So originally our kit came with the flange itself with a dash 10 fitting, I don't know what to call it, and then gasket and two M8 by 125 20 millimeter nuts. Um, we are not going to use these. Instead, I ran out to Ace Hardware and got these. This is an M8 by 1.25 millimeter stud that we're going to put in there. It'll be easier when we're trying to put our gasket on. It'll have something to hold on to. And then we're just going to use some flange nuts on top of our flange and call that good. It'll be easier access. So the next step is to drill and tap for these on our block. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and drill what we need to out of our oil pan, which is kind of nerve-wracking. Um, I've already gone ahead and kind of drilled these out a little bit. It starts at a roughly 3 16 hole. Um, I know that because I just kind of put this in there and it's about the exact same size and I just cleaned it out and didn't even like remove any material. And I went up to a 7 32nd, so this one actually started removing a little bit of material. Uh, I'm making sure that, I, that I'm not drilling into it, so the holes are actually uh, about 20 mil deep already. And they're perfect. I'm not trying to drill all the way through the pan because then we're going to have some major issues. So you do not want to drill all the way through. You just want to drill to clear these two out. Um, for an M8 by a 1.25 thread, you want a drill bit that's 6.8 mil, which equates to a 0.26 inches, which is almost exactly a quarter of an inch. So we're just going to use a quarter inch drill bit because that's what I have. So tapping it will be a little bit more difficult, but not really. And then you'll need one of these, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But let's go ahead and finish drilling those two out. All right, so now that both of those are drilled out, we need to drill out our centerpiece here. Um, it doesn't have to be the whole thing. I think the whole thing is like an inch. I don't have an inch drill bit, and I've read multiple times that you don't need one. Um, however... They do recommend that you go up to a half inch, which is roughly the size of our opening on our flange. It's never going to return that much oil at one time. You know, on the off chance that it needs to, it's able. I'm just going to step up gradually, probably start with something kind of small like the 3 8 I have already sitting out. And then 3 8 
quarter inch I have, and then I've got a, I'll either do this 7 16 bit or go ahead and use a step bit up to a half inch because it's the only half inch I have. Alright, so we have drilled all the way through, um, we have a half inch hole in there, So, but before I cleaned it all out, I made sure to spray the outside with some brake clean, clean it up. I continually cleaned it out as I was drilling, that way I wouldn't have shavings all over the place. And then afterwards, I used shop vac, made sure to pull everything out of here, this way, and then I used an air hose and sprayed it out, like put it in the hole, sprayed it out that way, sprayed it out underneath. Uh, stuck my shot back all the way up in here and got it every little thing that I can So it's probably cleaner than before I even pulled this thing off. Don't have to worry about any shavings That's the most important part last thing we have to do is tap our holes here So we have an m8125 Tap and we're just gonna go Nice and easy back and forth. All right, so I got the first one in uh, the second one. I'm just gonna go a little more in depth that way, just in case I screw it up, I didn't teach you something wrong. So the tap itself is tapered, so it's going to take a little while. Just make sure that you're working on getting it straight. It's going to be frustrating. And you've got to remember, you've got to be very careful. Uh, so you're applying pressure while you're going forward, backwards, and then you're going to oil it up. I just All I have is this hydraulic air oil, but I'm not cutting it very fast. Just I'm adding a little to the hole, a little to the tap every once in a while. Use that and clean out the tap, clean off this hole. Make... All right, so now what we're going to do is add our stud as we did on this side. And how we're going to do that is we have our two flange bolts here. Uh, we're going to put them on the stud back to back like this, and we'll tighten them on this stud, and then we will use them to tighten it into our oil pan. You're going to need a socket and a wrench. So, I'm going to go ahead and start threading this guy in. So you can kind of see that I'm spinning these, um, I'm spinning our nuts here, but I'm not really spinning our stud. What we want to do, we're going to grab the back nut with our wrench, and then we're going to grab the front nut with our socket, and we're just going to tighten them on there, so that they're nice and tight to each other. Then we can remove our wrench, and we can just slowly start spinning our stud in place. I'm going to give it a couple ugga duggas to make sure it never comes off. To loosen, because you don't want to loosen the stud you just put on, put our wrench back on, and then we're just going to go the opposite way. Blah, 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 blah. We're just going to go the opposite way, just like I did. Break the two nuts, and then they should slide right off. And that's all she wrote. So now we can use, we can throw our gasket up here. We throw our flange on. And then we'll t throw our two bolts on. Tighten these guys down. So our flange is installed. Really happy with how this has turned out so far. So I'm going to go ahead and clean it out one more time for my peace of mind. Make sure none of the bits from tapping the holes got inside of the oil pan. And then we're going to start bolting this thing back together. Uh, we'll RTV this pan before. I'm probably not going to show that on camera. Um, if you wanted to see how everything is torqued down, you can go back and watch the video I made on putting the engine together. Alright guys, that is going to do it for this episode. As y'all can see, we got the oil pan back on. Our TV is everywhere, as always. I have to go back and clean that up, but that's beside the point. So the one thing we have to do before we put the engine back in the car is actually mess with the steering rack. So that will be in the next episode. So make sure you are Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything coming up. Um, trying to make the episodes more frequent. They're just going to be a little shorter that way because you boys got to go to work. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe. 
Uh, I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. I think currently we just passed 200. So huge thanks to all you guys. Thank you so much. Make sure to drop a like on this video. It really does help out a lot. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'm always posting before YouTube there, you know, just little sneak peeks and whatnot, what I'm working on that day. And I will catch y'all in the next one.